Hi, it's Simon Hepburn from Marketing Advice for Schools again. Um, last month, um, we made a video that looked at the challenges facing schools over the next year or two, uh, with a specific focus on areas such as demographic change, problems in the economy, and new types of schools, changing ways of communication, uh, the growth of multi-academy trust, which is something that's happening in England um, and perhaps in other places around the world, and staffing issues. Now, it's a lot easier to find problems sometimes than it is to find solutions. You just have to look around them and, and see the challenges that, that people are facing. But what we've done in this video is look around the marketing industry and found six ideas, six innovations that might help you address these issues. And we're always happy to talk to you about, you know, um, how, we, how they could be applied to your school in your particular situation. So a quick introduction before we dive into them in, in more detail, um, so you can maybe skip forward in the in the video to find the bit you're you're most interested in. And um, the first one is is stakeholder linking. Now we've talked about stakeholders a lot in schools. The fact that schools don't have a single customer, or um, in the, in a way that you know you would get if you were selling a uh, you know a, a tin of beans or something like that. Um, so schools have lots of different stakeholders. But rather than just targeting them separately, can we actually make links between them? You know, can we find the best people uh, perhaps to engage? Um, Future, future students, future parents, um, and, and make them into ambassadors, make them into people who will who will sell your stories for you. So we'll talk about that a bit later on in more detail. The second thing is the whole customer experience idea. People are talking a lot about UX, user experience in the digital world, um, but actually, how are people really f um, finding your experience at school? And equally, um, are they getting the long-term experience that you promise in the short term? And there's a big difference between those two um, that we'll talk about. The third thing is internal engagement. Now, staff, um, staffing came up as, as, a, as an issue, and engaging your staff, engaging people who work for you, has benefits that go beyond sort of retention and recruitment. Um, and we'll talk about, um, you know, that maybe they are the, the most important stakeholder group that you're not engaging at the minute. The next thing is employer branding, and that's a specific response to staffing issues. You know, some of the solutions that people are putting in place uh, to get staff into schools next year you know, are, are fine, but they're expensive, they're short term, and maybe they're not particularly high quality. How can you work next year in the longer term to make sure you get good people on a, on a regular basis? I'm not going to use the you know, word conveyor belt, but that sort of idea. Gamification, um, something again that's really interesting in the outside world. It's something that schools have been doing for a long, long time, as you'll see if you, if you see our section on this. But, you know, can we talk about, can we use this to help engage people, to bring people into the school? And finally, um, lead magnets, not lead magnets. My background as a chemistry teacher um, got me confused when I saw this for the first time. But it's a bit like gamification. What can you give people to help them through the, the marketing funnel, to help them choose your school in the end? And there's a little bit of a tendency sometimes to think that you know parent, parents and, and stakeholders should you know um, visit the school, um, have a chat, and then then sign up immediately or, or make a decision immediately. But maybe there's things we can do uh, to help with that. So these are the six areas. Um, as you say, we'll have a look through each one in turn. So the first one is, is stakeholder linking, and, and here's an example from a school that um, I've been working with this year, um, which has been anonymized. Um, and so you might be aware of the importance interest graph if you've sort of work with marketing advice for schools before and uh, it's one of the most important things we do at the start of our consulting work to find out you know which of the stakeholders that matter but actually putting them together and saying well actually you know, let's rather than doing all the work ourselves as marketeers let's actually see if we can empower staff to go out to feeder schools in this particular case can we get six um, can we get uh, former pupils to come in and talk about you know the advantage of the sixth form to them and i think one of the principles we've been talking with a lot of schools about this year really is about reducing um you know making you sorry making best use of the resources that you've got in schools reducing the amount of time that marketers have to work on these things so that's the key thing if you can if you can help you know create these maps, create these links, that might really, really help you. Um, and again, if you want to have a go at this, um, please do. And um, if you want to talk about it, please give us a call and I can talk you through the process of this. Oh, there's a little picture there. Okay. Um, the second thing, and I'll build this up this time, is, is again about the customer experience. Um, and there's a lot of talk about personalizing um, websites, personalizing um, uh, other things in other industries um, so that you get the right information. I was listening to a fantastic podcast just this morning about a school in Scotland that is very much personalising um, brochures and personalising the experience that people get when they visit their website. And I think that's got to be the future um, for, for school marketing. But equally, turning that on our heads, are we actually aware of what the experience um, that, that people have is? Um, do we actually 
do things like mystery shopping, uh, which again is something that uh, it's a really interesting chat this year about. Uh, do we actually just live the process ourselves? Do we try and you know see what it'd be like for someone walking around our school on a um, on a visit? Um, the UX principles uh, that apply to digital marketing, um, you know, researching things and doing lots of research as to what people might want. And then simplicity, consistency and functionality, which I think are really good ideas um, for schools to put into into place. Um, you know, are we making sure that people get what they want? You know, we don't need all the bells and whistles. We don't need complicated websites with, with lots of video and, and, and um, flashy pop up things. Um, do we get people to what they want as soon as they possibly can? And then how do we check we're improving? Again, research is something that, you know, again, is very, very important. Are we always asking people, what can we do better? The next thing, um, internal engagement, uh, particularly looking at staff, and that doesn't have to be teachers, that could be other people that work for your school. Um, it could be your governors, it could be people who you have a good relationship with already. Um, you know, these are the, the, the people who could turn into engaged stakeholders. They could be the people that the, are your ambassadors that go out into their communities. The problem is if they're not sure you know, what you need them to say at schools, if you're not sure how you want them to do that, that can be a real issue. Um, other benefits um, of internal engagement, I've written a LinkedIn article about this recently, um, which again, if you look me up, up on LinkedIn, you can find a bit more about that. Um, things like collaboration, you know, actually bringing together all the people that work in a particular area, whether that's teaching English or managing your site or looking after health and safety. You know, those sort of things can be fantastic if you if you bring people together and engage them more. It can also save as a reputation check. There have been a lot of examples in the press of schools that have not been listening uh, internally and issues have arisen around safeguarding issues, around reputation issues. Um, really, really important that you make sure that you are engaged with staff so they feel they can trust you if something goes on. And as I said, that, that, that's one of the risks, really. If, if staff aren't engaged, they may leave themselves. They may um, give a false impression to other people. They may say things to other people about their experience, which you would, have, you would not want them to do. And as I said, that they may eventually um, fail to blow the whistle on, on issues that could affect your reputation. So, you know, how are you engaging your staff at the minute? How are you making sure that they are part of your marketing, marketing process? And is it something that marketing should be more involved with? I think it should. And again, related to that, and, and related to the staffing issue, maybe a bit more specifically, is the idea of employer branding. Um, there's a very traditional route that people go through to find jobs in schools, and, and that's true whether you're a teacher, a teaching assistant, or a member of support staff. But that's not working in some cases because there simply aren't the number of people applying out there in particular areas. Um, secondary schools, areas like physics, obviously design technology, but also you know we're seeing business managers having a real problem trying to recruit people for those sort of roles um, and so on. So the the minute schools will tend to be jumping and this time of year, you know you tend to jump for agencies for um, supply staff and so on. But they're expensive and, and sometimes they're not very good. You know people who are around at this time of year who haven't got permanent jobs, there is a reason for that. So alternative, um, something you know that I think schools could really, really focus on is employer branding. And I've got a little journey on the left hand side, you can stop the video and have a look at this. But I've spoken about this a couple of times, you know, rather than um, the traditional way of, of finding a job, wouldn't it be great if, if we didn't actually have to, have to advertise? If people were, you know, told by current staff, we've got a job coming up, I think it'd be fantastic for you. There was flexibility in the process. So they didn't have to, um, you know, um, you know, um, find expensive childcare and things like that, and at least initially in the recruitment process. And a flexibility in the in the job offer, you know, in terms of where they're working, working time, um, and things like that. Um, I was at a court, um, talk this year where somebody said that if you put flexible working in a job description, job advert, you can get four times as many people applying for it um, if you offer a little bit of flexibility. So take employer branding um, seriously over time. And again, you know, another thing is gamification. Um, it's very trendy to talk about this. Um, but actually, education is something that's been doing this for ages. I mean, I remember star charts when I was at school, which is a, a long time ago. Um, people, you know, you go into schools and you see walls with names of donors who've given money to the school um, and so on. So in a, in a way, gamification is nothing new in the core business of education. But are we actually doing it when we when we use other, with other stakeholders? Um, so, for example, um, 
you know, when someone when you know, I've seen examples where when people apply, they go to the website and then there's a little treasure hunt on the website. So people actually go to the right places. They fill in uh, forms. When people come to open days, I love the idea of giving people a treasure hunt. You know, a little map. Go and go actually find the key issues around the school or put some QR codes up. And when people see, you know, when people get a few QR codes, maybe they they qualify for a little prize at the end of the at the end of the session. You know, try and make it more interesting and more engaging, particularly if you've got children involved. Uh, particularly if you're trying to get uh, younger children excited about about a, a tour around a school. Um, and also, you know, I'm seeing more and more example metaverse, um, particularly um, in in older. Um, students um, and in employers trying to recruit people. I, I saw something today, Ernst & Young, as an employer trying to get people to set up avatars in their metaverse and interact around the place with different people. Maybe that's something you want to be the first school to do. Maybe it would work really, really well for you. Um, maybe it's something that isn't going to work, but it's something to try um, and be innovative with. And finally, the, the lead magnets. Um, and this is something that, again, is coming from America. And it's, again, something that you know, isn't particularly new um, for schools, isn't particularly something that is surprising, but it's a way of formalizing something that we're doing and saying, well, actually, you know, when we give a, a book to people or when we give, um, you know, something like uh, a guide to starting schools or when we go out um, to a nursery school and, and give a talk about, um, you know, what it's like for transitioning children into into reception into kindergarten those sort of areas you know, is that part of our process are we actually saying this is something that has a value we're offering it and in return for that you know we want your contact details we'd like you to have the opportunity to invite you to uh, to a um, to a one-to-one -one session or to an open day or something like that um, and I think it's something that is really really interesting way of driving people down the marketing funnel um, that we talked about so again think about you know what do you already do that's a a lead magnet and are we making most use of it in those ideas just going to finish with the five principles we put in the last video and I think this they're, they're really really useful for anyone thinking about marketing and, and how to be innovative um, and how to cope with the issues that are there very simply you know what is happening outside the world um, in teaching we are not the cutting edge of marketing um, there are plenty of um, places that are, that are ahead what can we learn and apply um, can we plan ahead we talk about employer branding in this particular talk what are we doing to make sure that we have the right staff in five years time, not in not in one year's time? Listening, absolutely. What do these people want? Such an important part. Um, innovating and investing. Um, again, you know, seeing more and more um, schools, you know, that are doing great things um, in marketing, but equally, you know, there are schools that are having real trouble. Um, independent schools are closing at the rate of you know one or two a month i'm seeing now um you know why are they why is that happening they're not looking forward they're not investing in the future technology okay testing very very important uh what we're doing there and finally and again this is this is obviously um you know a little bit of a plug for what we do but if you've got problems you know ask for help find specialists find people who who know marketing who know schools um and who know what is working and what is out there okay so finally, yep, uh, marketingadvisorschools.com is a good place to find things. You can sign up for our, our monthly newsletter where you'll find videos like this. Um, and also um, you can look at um, our networking um, plans for next year and also um, our training courses. So thank you very much.